At the last Orange Slice, Steve presented a whole bunch of ideas, a brief overview of solar and tokenizers, filters, token streams. Does everybody remember these terms? Uh, probably, hopefully, right? <laughs> thanks, thanks to Steve. Uh, so, so yeah, and after the Orange Slice, uh, we had a coding experience where we could try to get a whole bunch of tests passing. And in order to figure out why they weren't passing, we had to update the configuration of solar. And so in doing that, it helped me understand a little bit about how configuration of solar work, how, how data gets into the index via this configuration, and how data can be pulled out of the index via the configuration. And, and so this is what this talk is on. And hopefully, I, I can express onto you guys how beneficial it was for me to take down this beast of solar and figure it out pretty easily, thanks to Steve's examples, how it all works and ties together. So uh, if, nothing, if you don't take away anything else from this speech, hopefully you just remember schema dot XML. Uh, and that, that's, that's it. That's really it. Uh, oh, there also is one caveat. I'm glad you showed up. Um, you can tell me whenever I'm wrong, because I'm not a solar expert, expert in any means. right? So the only caveat is when you do, you have to say, Jason, no, you couldn't be more wrong. OK? So it ha you, have, you have to lead with that. All right, so think of a book, a big book, right? Like, what would be a good way to find phrases or terms that appear in the book anywhere in the book? Like, what would be something you might use to do that? Go to Amazon.com and go search inside the book and type the word. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> help, help me out. Index. Right, you'd use an index. I, I, I got to work with, with Dan uh, during Steve's Orange Slice exercise, and he got the privilege to work with me. So he, so he, <laughs> so he knows that answer, right? It's an index. Right, so think of an index, right? It's got a whole bunch of words, terms, with you know, where you can find in the book what page to go to, right? Maybe multiple pages, right? So it's not an exact correlation, but it's a similar correlation that we can at least understand, right? So not just pages where it's like maybe five times you've found the phrase in the book, but maybe hundreds, you know, thousands, millions, maybe even <laughs> billions. <laughs> no? I thought it was funny. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we can think of the index in the back of a book kind of like solar, right? So there it is. Uh, we use our brains to find words or terms, right? So if I want to find apple, right, my brain is already figuring out the rules to find apple, right? Do I need to lowercase it? It starts with an A, right? So maybe I go to the A's, right? Those simple rules are kind of how solar interprets where to find it in the, in the, in the index, right? Through schema.xml, which eventually I'm going to get to. So there, I got to it. So Solar's brain <laughs> is schema.xml. Hopefully you can understand that correlation. And so rather than words, like Steve mentioned, the things in the index are text streams. So how does the index get populated to begin with? Right. Well, hopefully by now you understand that it's schema.xml. But say you've got a whole bunch of data. You've got so much data, right? And you go through this uh, solar, which sits on top of Lucene, and you end up with this giant index of stuff, right? It's not the index in the back of the book, but it's the same correlation, right? How does that happen? Well, schema.xml is how it happens, right? And rather than go through and explain what all this word mumbo jumbo says, that's how it happens. So I'm just telling you that's how it happens. And so how does it get searched? Well, you've got these guys, and they all want your data, right? They're very happy about your data. <laughs> Right, so same thing goes through solar stuff. We're seeing it's in the index. Well, how does that work? Well, somebody say it. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so I think we've established that schema is the brain. Um, index contains one or more documents, right? Documents are a search, a term of search, and index. So if we do a equals b equals c, right? An index is a ton of documents, all having a ton of fields, possibly. Right? Does it make sense yet? Yes? No? OK. And schema.xml is where it's at. It defines the fields and how an index and search uh, is each used. So this is an example of what you might find in schema.xml to identify a field called HTML. It's named HTML by that little simple explanation. right? And it has all these other attributes. I'm not really going to go into all, what all those mean, but you can they just uh, help identify the, the field called HTML within Solar. And right now, it's pointed to have a type of example. And if you see, 
It has a field type now identified called example. So that field called HTML is defined by this. Remember the apple, lowercase it in my brain, find it in an index. This is how Solar's brain figures out apple, right, of what HTML means. So again, it's got its own fields. And it, example is identified by anal this analyzer, which has all this HTML stripping off and lower casing it. And I'll get into more about what that might mean later, but this is the correlation between Apple that Solar uses on this field called HTML. And so during Steve's examples, he had one of these uh, tests. This is an example of one of the tests he had. One of the fields in his index was called SSL search host name, right? And so uh, it expected that when I search over this field called SSL search host name with this search query, uh, I'd expect to hit on these uh, search terms, right? So uppercase virginia.edu, even, even though it's not in here, a partial match, and like the full, full text string. Hopefully that makes sense. It's pretty easy. And a miss on mail.virginia.edu, and it's not, mail, mail nowhere is in here. So these are the expectations that I want to have happen. And when we run it, it fails. Right, so, so where do we look? Schema.xml. All right, see, I get an A for this, right? Thank you. <laughs> All right, so when we look in schema.xml, we find this entry, right? And it points to SSL search host name, along with like, I don't know, 20 other fields or whatever it was. And so we see that it's, yeah, that's what I said. And so it's of type text general. And what does that mean? Well, there, there's, there's what it means. It's whenever you search, whenever you put data into the index or pull data out of the index, its brain is going to say, all right, I'm going to strip it apart by white space, right? And so just like I pointed to it, uh, it doesn't work. Right, because when you put it into the index and you strip it off by white space, well, there's no white space in the host name, right? So it's going to put the entire thing in there, and that's what's going to be in the index. So when you search over a partial match, there's no partial match in the index. It's a full string, so it's not going to—it's going to miss, right? And so what we need to do is come up with a different field type to define what it means, right? Remember the apple? I'm going to lowercase. I'm going to figure out where it is in the index. I need to come up with a different configuration, and so we can still use white space because we're splitting up by white space is fine. There's probably a better one, but it still makes the test pass. And this n-gram filter factory, rather than going through what these mean, it basically just means I'm going to split it up into partial matches so that you can find partial matches of your search query rather than the entire, the entire search query. And so lowercase filter factory is a filter that goes across your search term and just lowercases your search term. So it lowercases all the partial matches and splits it up by white space. And so that's what it means. And so rather than we're almost done. If we want to change what's in schema.xml to make his test pass, we're almost done, except we're still defining it text general. And all we have to do is change it to, to use this. And so this guy's got all the power, right? Like he knows, he tells this guy how to act, tells him how to think, right? He's the brain behind the, the guy sitting there. Um, and so when we go back and we run this after changing the schema.xml file, it passes, right? But why? Right? Hopefully. This is where I want to drive home how schema.xml works. And I've said it, but hopefully if I show you, it'll, like I said, drive it home. And so everybody remembers this slide, right? It's, you got a whole bunch of data. It goes into your index, and it gets you know, put here via the rules, the brain behind this guy. And so like I said, we're going to bring it home here. And so we're going to change what previously were the rules here to um, just go off of this particular single data. We're not, we're, gonna, we're not gonna index tons of data, we're just gonna index that on the SSL search hostname field. And when we create an index, this is what's in the index, just this string. This is what I said before, but I'm just basically showing you now, so hopefully it makes more sense. And so right now it's just filtering on this. Like I said, there's no white space in this, so it's gonna index this entire thing. And so this is why this fails, but this hits, because it's hitting because it's finding this entire string. And so when we, what we need to do is go back and rename it, right? Remember this guy, he's got all the power. Um, and what gets put into the index, when it, when it takes that input and runs it through its brain, it puts this and this and this and this and just a whole bunch of partial matches, right? Split up by white space characters. And so when we run the test again, this hits 
because I didn't dot, dot, dot means that there's a ton more here. <laughs> so it lowercase is that, right? Lowercase is that, and it finds it somewhere in the index. It finds this somewhere in the index, and it finds this somewhere in the index, because it's the full string. Did I get this right so far? Yep. I mean, this is great. <laughs> All right. And so these arrows just kind of highlight what I've been saying, right? Like this makes this pass, this makes this pass, and, and this was what Steve's example was pretty much like, right? So, so what, what have you learned? At least for me, I've learned that I can take on something that was a little bit of a beast, like I began saying, uh, and understand it. And it's given me a little bit of, um, I don't know, motivation, confidence to try to tackle something more uh, that's harder than solar to understand. Uh, I'm very appreciative of that. Um, so like we can think of uh, the back of the, an index in the back of the book, it's not a direct correlation, but at least it helps me understand the correlation between schema, the schema configuration and schema that XML for solar, you know, and how it all works. Uh, it, holds the, it has the brains, it holds the power, it sets the rules for how stuff gets put in and put out. Uh, and thanks, to, like I said, thanks to Steve's exercises, I was able, for the most part, to understand how it works in like only a couple of hours without knowing really anything about solar. So hopefully you can look at it now and maybe get some motivation to not just tackle solar, but something else. So.